All right, so today I'm going to be doing an everything you need to know video for Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Lately, I've been playing a lot of the game and I've actually taken a bit of a break the past couple of days because Sekiro came out and I had some other things to do. But mostly speaking, since launch, I've been playing a lot of the game and there are a lot of different tips and tricks and, you know, helpful pointers that I have that I could break down into a bunch of individual videos and then, you know, maximize ad revenue and have a bunch of different segments. But I'd rather just put it all together into one big video. So without further ado, here goes. Now, most of this advice is only really relevant after level 30. During the early leveling process, there are wonderfully crafted missions, so take your time with those. Um, if you go really quickly, it should be something like 15 hours-ish to get to level 30, and then the real game starts. A huge amount of content opens up. Um, but if you go really slow, maybe it's even 30, 40, or 50 hours if you explore everything. But enjoy the leveling process. Once you get to 30, a vast amount of content opens, and a lot of players are going to be you know, looking for advice, and that's where the majority of these tips and you know pointers will lie and focus on now once you get to level 30 a lot of people are going to be expecting that you unlock your specialization when you go to the base of operations there's going to be a specialization tree here uh, but you don't get that until well after uh, level 30 or the end of the story campaign what you need to do upon reaching max level 30 completing all of the story missions is go in and first do all of the different strongholds you can do the strongholds at level 28 in some cases i think this one right here is a level 28 stronghold um, another one over here i believe is a level 28 stronghold and then the third one over here is a level 30 uh, so once you're you know all the required gear and you know level etc uh, do all three of those strongholds and that will put you in world tier one you'll get a timer at the end of the capital building stronghold you'll go to world tier one and then once you're in world tier one you come back to the main base of operations and this specialization menu will have unlocked you go into the specialization menu and you can select whichever one you want and you can switch between all three of these at will some players for some reason don't know about that i've gotten some questions about that you can switch between these at will whenever you want to once you have your preferred specialization it's time to start unlocking points for the different perks within that specialization tree and there are a number of different ways to do this but some are distinctly better than others now i can't demonstrate it right now but farming invaded missions is probably the best way invaded missions are marked with a big red symbol just like the ones i'm highlighting right now it will just be very bright red and hard to miss uh, and you can do these as many times as you want as long as you join different players. So you can only do them once on your own character and then they are gone. But if you join a friend or if you level an, a second character or you know otherwise join another agent and they haven't done these missions, then you can do them again. So it just comes down to finding people that haven't quite done all of the invaded missions in every world tier and then just doing them over and over again with those other players because you can do them as many times as you want and every time you complete an invaded mission regardless of how many times you've done it before or what character you're on uh, you will get the five points so just find people that still have them join them and farm them a second way to farm for specialization points is to do bounties now this is probably the best way if you're a solo player if you don't want to group up with other players you don't have friends that still have the invaded missions available on their map there's a number of different reasons why you wouldn't be able to do the optimal method you can also do bounties now the best way that i've found is to go and solo the black tusk bounties specifically ones that are normal or hard uh, when you get up into the challenging ones you really do need a, a very competent build it's not something you can just steamroll right through it requires planning or maybe even a group um, or at the very least something very calculated you have to have a, a good set of gear that you're using but normal and hard really shouldn't be a problem for most players and they do give three specialization points per bounty that you complete uh, they are quite lucrative so if you are a solo if you're looking for something alternative to farm rather than invaded missions bounties is the next best thing for specialization points now, whenever you're ready, it's time to advance through the world tiers. As we can recall, you were dropped into world tier one when you completed the Capitol Hill stronghold, and that's when you got your specialization. Now, you can do this before farming specialization points or after. It really doesn't matter all that much. But once you're ready to go through the world tiers, it's time to do the strongholds again. I think it starts with Roosevelt Island, um, but basically you just look for whatever stronghold is unlocked, and it will have prerequisite missions. So whichever stronghold is available and marked as clearly 
available on the map will have a minimum gear score required which is a hard lock you have to achieve that gear score to get in and then two roughly two prerequisite missions that you must do in order to unlock it and all you have to do is do the, the two prerequisite missions, then do the stronghold, and you'll jump from World Tier 1 to World Tier 2. And then the same thing again, you'll jump from World Tier 2 to World Tier 3. Same thing again from World Tier 3 to World Tier 4. And then currently World Tier 5 is locked, but it'll, it'll be available soon. So eventually World Tier 4 to 5, and then you're maxed out and you're on the top tier of content. Here is a very important side note. Do not cheese the strongholds. I don't know if they've concrete fixed this yet. I've heard a couple more reports actually in recent hours. So I'm inclined to believe that it is not quite fixed or there is some variation of it still out there. Um, but all that aside, there is a glitch where if you get into a stronghold before you should have it available and you complete a stronghold without having the requirements done on your specific character, you can lock yourself out of progressing through the further world tiers. So do not cheese the strongholds. If your friend says, hey, I can get you into this stronghold before, before you're ready to do it, you know, you can skip content, never do that. Make sure that you have done, your personal character has done all of the requirements and met all of the gear score, you know, different check checkboxes before doing the strongholds because somehow it can glitch and it will lock you out of progression. Now, they may have fixed most variations of this, but I've seen reports very recently, so just keep that in mind. If you get that glitch, it's very disheartening. So so just always make sure you're doing the requirements personally before doing the strongholds. Next up is builds. An integral part of the game is constructing a build that is not only fun, but powerful and allows you to do everything that you want to do. And I had a bunch of different choices here. What I could have done is constructed individual videos for every build that I thought up and then done slight variations on those builds and reposted them and maximized the number of videos that I'm producing. But a better tactic, I believe, is creating potent combinations of talents and then just doing them all at once so you guys can take the basic framework of a build and then work off of it yourself because there are certain ones that are very good and uh yeah without further ado let's get started with builds first up is a basic one-shot sniper build the bones are quite simple all you need is a high gear score model 700 with very good base damage that is it if it has talents that stack on top of that in an effective way then that's fantastic and then you just need three piece araldi holdings you can look for weapon damage on your gear you can look for headshot damage you can spec into whatever you know special talents you want but the basic bread and butter of a one-shot sniper build that will work in both normalized and non-normalized pvp is a model 700 with high base damage and then three piece araldi holdings you can use the sniper specialization uh the sharpshooter that will help with your headshot damage you can use a bunch of different talents offensive talents on gear you can have you know better offensive system mods you can have weapon damage marksman rifle damage etc um, but the bread and butter the simple very basic form model 700 high base damage three piece araldi holdings because that stacks up accuracy headshot damage and marksman rifle damage uh, to a large degree and then boom you're good that's a one-shot sniper build Next, we have the skeleton of an SMG crit build, and this one is quite simple as well, and a lot of people enjoy this from Division 1. They like the vector, they like the SMG run-and-gun style, uh, and this one has insane DPS, and you can melt players very, very quickly. All you need is a vector SBR or a vector with four modification slots. That's the important part. Four mod slots because what you need to do is get critical hit damage and critical hit chance on all of the different attachment slots. The important ones are the under barrel with critical hit chance and the muzzle with critical hit chance 20% for the suppressor. Those are the very important ones. That's 30% between them on top of the 14.5% or whatever it ends up being intrinsic on your weapon. Uh, on, on top of that critical hit chance, that's a very high amount off the bat. Uh, and then if you can get an extended mag, that's very helpful as well for plus 12 rounds, but not critical. Uh, the important thing is four modification slots for critical hit chance and critical hit chance on the muzzle after that you need to combine it with the strained talent strained is plus 10 percent critical hit damage is gained for every five percent of your armor that is depleted that is insane in both pve and pvp it does get down tuned and adjusted in pvp it's not quite as strong in player versus player normalized encounters that's very specific. In normalized PvP, it gets downtuned, uh, but it's still insanely strong even after it gets normalized. So strained in combination with Berserk. 
Berserk does 10% weapon damage for every 10% of max armor depleted. That, again, is insane. The combination of those two things mean that when you're taking damage to your armor, your gun is improving in its power drastically to the point where you can absolutely melt anything that comes near you when you're down towards the end of your armor bar, even in normalized PvP. As you can see, with a quick burst, you're going to be doing well upwards of 300,000 DPS uh, with max critical hit chance when you have all the attachments, etc., even while you have full armor. As soon as you start losing your armor, your damage per second is going to go up towards a million with an SMG. So if you're looking for an SMG crit build, run and gun, close range, it's all about the vector, strained, and berserk on the chest piece. Next up, really quickly, is a max damage crit LMG build, because a lot of people like the LMG weapon archetype. Uh, it revolves around the RPK, because the RPK has access to one of the best talents in the game when it comes to weapons, at least in my opinion, and that is Frenzy. Frenzy, reloading from empty grants 35% weapon damage and 35% rate of fire for 7 seconds, and then also if you can get Allegro, or another talent that augments magazine size, that is very helpful as well. Uh, a combination of those talents, but especially Frenzy on an RPK, will lead to huge amounts of base damage, and you can absolutely shred, again, in both normal Normalized and non-normalized PvP, as well as PvE, because LMGs are quite powerful with the 15% multiplicative damage to targets out of cover, which is intrinsic on the LMG weapon type. Now, if you really want to maximize it and go balls to the wall, which is possible, though not necessarily uh, critical, because the LMG does so much base damage to begin with, you can stack uh, critical hit chance and weapon damage and critical hit damage everywhere else on your gear. I have critical hit chance on my chest piece. Let's go over and see what we have on the mask. I think I have critical hit chance damage to elites. You could have critical hit damage as well. Uh, weapon damage, critical hit chance on the gloves. I have rifle damage, which should be something else, but this should be LMG damage if you're really maximizing it, but I leave it there for my secondary weapon. Anyways, critical hit chance on the knee pads, uh, and then surgical for critical hit chance and critical hit chance intrinsic on the holster. So all of that combined leaves me with an LMG, which is doing, and let's scroll over our weapon stats here. Uh, weapons, I have 59% uh, critical hit chance with uh, an LMG weapon type, which is 1% off maximum. So nearly max critical hit chance LMG. Uh, and then as a result of that, if I go all the way to a empty magazine, you'll be able to see the rate of fire spikes and the weapon damage becomes insanely high. Uh, and you can use this to devastating effect and you can also tweak it a hefty amount. So that's a basic damage LMG build archetype there. Last up is a tank concept that will help a lot of players solo the majority of the content very easily uh, with huge amounts of healing. Now I'll try to go quickly because this video is already dragging on as it is. Uh, the main bread and butter is getting the safeguard talent on the backpack. 150% bonus to repairing and healing effects for 20 seconds. That's exceedingly powerful. 150% is a huge amount. Um, and all you need to do is have that talent. You really don't need to construct much else around the build. And then stagger that on top of having the knee pads, which give you patience. After being in cover for three seconds, armor repairs by 5% every one second. That gets improved by 150%, which brings it well up over 10%, 12.5%, in fact, of your armor bar every one second after being in cover for three seconds. And that's very common in both PvP and PvE, quite frankly, but mostly in PvE. Uh, so if you have the combination of those two talents, you're going to be able to shred through NPCs um, or at the very least sustain most, if not all, of their damage without having to worry. And then you combine that on top of other different combinations like having Berserk on the chest piece, um, like I said before in, in an earlier version of one of the builds, and then Strained on an SMG. And if you have all these different combinations, you can have a build that can sustain all of the incoming damage while dishing out massive amounts of damage whenever you're getting hit. Uh, there are other talents as well that you can use. You can go down and find something like Blacksmith, killing an enemy with your sidearm, repairs 25% of your armor, can occur once every 10 seconds. Again, this is augmented by Safeguard, and you can really, really buff up your character. Safeguard actually also helps with uh, your, your med kits or your armor kits. Um, so getting Safeguard and then Patience on the knee pads is just a wonderful way to create a bare bones PvE build that can do pretty much all the content by yourself. Next up is Skirmish, and there are a couple of different tips that I have specifically for conflict normalized PvP, but I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, the first tip is that there are basically a trio of builds that people are running right now. Number one is the one-shot sniper build that we talked about with a Model 700 uh, that is capable of dealing one-shot headshot damage to whatever agent you are able to hit. 
Um, that's number one. A lot of players are running that. Number two is a shield build utilizing the, uh, what's what's it called specifically? The deflector ballistic shield and then the chem launcher self-heal. The deflector can fire bullets directly back at an enemy. You can drop it and pull it back up to avoid, you know, going on cooldown while sprinting. Um, there are a variety of different ways that you can use this. You can strafe back and forth within your own chem launcher heals. Um, and if you stack skill power, then you're able to sustain a lot of damage uh, over a long period of time while using a sidearm, and sidearms are extremely powerful. So a lot of people are using the deflector shield with the chem launcher self-heal. That's the second thing other than one-shot snipers. And then the third thing that a lot of people are using is the defender drone. The defender drone is one of the most valuable skills in PvP, specifically conflict PvP, because it comes back after every death. All of your skills reset after every death, so they don't really have a super long cooldown. And the defender drone really doesn't have that long of a cooldown to begin with. It only has a 60 second cooldown versus the other ones that have much higher with 94 seconds on the striker drone, or again, 94 seconds on fixer. So defender has a lower cooldown. It's more valuable because it actually actually blocks, fully blocks, a lot of the bullets that come in at you through microwave bursts, however that works. Um, but Defender Drone is quite good. And then the last tip that I have is self-detonating skills before the duration is over will refund 50% of the cooldown. A lot of players don't know that or don't properly utilize it. It doesn't matter when you do it. It could be about to die or about to expire. If you self-detonate the skill, then it refunds half of the cooldown. So the Defender Drone will be back in 30 seconds rather than 60 uh, if you're able to do that. But usually Defender Drones uh, die to enemy fire or something before that. But that is true across all the skills. So keep that in mind. Self-detonated skill to refund 50% of the cooldown. You don't even have to stack skill power, uh, and it works regardless of when you do it. Next up is crafting and crafting materials, and it is wildly different than Division 1, so I'll briefly go over it. Number one is titanium. Titanium is the most valuable crafting material in the entire game, but I'll talk more about that in just a second. So make sure that you're saving that whenever you get it, and are very you know frugal with how you spend it. The next thing is that the crafting bench needs to be upgraded, which requires polycarbonate, titanium, printer filament, um, in order to progress through the world tier. So right now I can craft gear score 250 items, because I haven't even upgraded all the way through, uh, and I require a lot more materials in order to do so. So upgrade your actual crafting bench to be able to craft, you know, higher gear score items. And then there's mods and miscellaneous, and you need to craft all of these one time, and then once you've crafted them one time, you'll have them for good. Again, a lot of the ones that you're really going to want, which is uh, the probably extended magazines, etc., uh, muzzle brakes, and, and that type of thing, they require titanium, so be very frugal with how you spend titanium. Select the ones that you know that you're going to get value out of first before spamming all the different options and wasting that titanium, but do make sure that you're crafting uh, all of these different weapon mods one time because then you have them in your arsenal for whatever weapon you choose to equip them on. Titanium is also used for recalibration, uh, about 24 items for a base recalibration, and then it scales up over time. So again, be very careful about what you're spending it on. Try not to recalibrate aimlessly a bunch of different times because you'll waste what is actually a very valuable resource. And now finally, it's time to talk about how to get maximum amounts of crafting materials very quickly. The best way to get crafting materials that I've found, oddly enough, is to go to a control point turn in a bunch of materials, that is water or crafting components or what have you, or food, um, and get a buff, which allows you to see loot about 10 meters away in the open world. And then all you do is run around the open world and loot things. That is, honest to God, the fastest way that I've found to get crafting materials in general. Though it's not very specific, you can't necessarily target in and say, I just want to find titanium. You have to find everything all at once, but it is the fastest way. After that, you can go, if you don't want to do that, that is, you can fight Black Tusk. Now, each of the three factions is tied to a different crafting material, but they typically only drop green materials, which really aren't the, the focus. Once you get into the world tiers and to the later stages of the game, you want the blue materials. Green, you'll pretty much be overflowing constantly. Uh, Black Tusk drop all three crafting materials with the blue variant type as well. So farming Black Tusk soldiers in the open world or in missions or wherever in strongholds, wherever you can possibly find Black Tusk soldiers, you will be able to get blue crafting materials fairly quickly through combat. But generally, the best way to do it is to go to any control point, turn in some resources and get the buff, and then just run around and find all the different lootable nodes in the open world. 
Another topic really quickly is inventory management, and I am adding this in post script because I forgot it in the actual video. So if my voice sounds different right now, I apologize. But basically all you want to do is go into any section of your inventory, it doesn't matter where, and then hit the left analog stick if you're on console or the corresponding key if you're on PC. It says in the bottom what it is, it's called options, and then you have a bunch of different options. Now I didn't know this for upwards of a week after the game came out, um, and I know a lot of players still don't know about this, and it is very convenient. So you have the item options, which everybody seems to probably know about and then you have inventory options and you can do things like sort by default you can sort by level quality brand armor name um, recent favorite junk all these to sell value you have all these different options that you can sort by and it really helps improve your quality of life the original game never had something like this and the inventory was an absolute nightmare to manage this will make your life better and then also if you go into options you can do something like grid view you're gonna see a lot of people use grid view because it's a lot easier um, and it has a lot of you know different uh, quality of life improvements for being able to scroll through your gear faster but you also can't see all of the information in the same panel um, whereas if you go in and turn off grid view then you can see the gear score right next to the actual piece of gear instead of the right hand side um, but use the options key and definitely use the sorting filter to find items and it will improve your quality of life in inventory management Another small tidbit that I forgot to add is the Reviver Hive, so I'll just talk about that really fast right now. The Reviver Hive is probably the best thing for solo players to use in order to increase their quality of life in PvE. It doesn't work in PvP or in the Dark Zone, um, but even in a group in PvE, the Reviver Hive works as like a guaranteed second life, and it also has some other benefits as well. So the Reviver Hive, if you have it off of cooldown and you go into a situation where you die, let me just aggro these NPCs real fast and show you. If you have it off of cooldown, run up on something and end up dying for whatever reason then the reviver hive will deploy and automatically get you up so as i die here i drop the reviver hive it brings me up and then as soon as i'm up i can immediately med kit because when you're revived like that you have a couple seconds of invulnerability so the reviver hive not only saves you from dying it also gives you a guaranteed immunity chance to use a med kit and get back to full health so the reviver hive while you're playing pve content is extremely useful especially for solo players um yeah i just thought i would throw that in there because again i forgot it in the original video the last thing I want to talk about is using cover versus breaking line of sight. Now, I see a lot of people talking about how you need to use cover more often because that's how Division 2 was built, and that's not always true. There are two different methods here. There's flat out using cover like this, and then hard aiming around or blind firing around, both of which are not great because you are exposed, and especially when you hard scope around the corner, you are completely exposed, and you can be shot regardless of where you aim. Uh, especially your head is available to be shot by enemy agents or NPCs or whatever. And the second method of using cover that isn't actually directly using cover on it is using it as a barrier to break line of sight. All you do is back up a few feet and then use the piece of cover as a line of sight barrier and shoot around it. If you do this properly, your body is actually never available to be shot. And this works against NPCs. It especially works against players. And all you need to do is constantly not use the cover, but use the cover as a line of sight barrier and sit back like this and then fire around the cover uh, and strafe back and forth depending on where the enemies are. There are two different ways of using cover and using it up on it as the game intends is usually not the proper way to go about it because you are more exposed while doing that. That's it for today. There's a lot more that I could talk about. It's a fairly complex game and it's one of the best launched looter shooters I think honestly, that I've ever seen, really, in general. Um, it's got a lot of content. It's going to have a lot more content over time. When they open up World Tier 5 and the raid, etc., I'll do a full review. Um, I'll still be playing for a long time to come, especially when there's further content. Uh, but those are some of the tips that I feel are probably going to improve quality of life for a lot of players. And if there is a lot more that I come up with or, or see around or, you know, deem to be suitable for, for guide material, then I'll put it into a further video. But yeah, enough is enough. It's already dragged on far too long. If you want to the channel check out the links down below we have a bunch of different ways to do so uh different social groups gaming communities forums um merchandise tons of stuff but yeah that's it thank you for watching everyone have a nice night